any person of the cloth, as they say in the room? Is there anyone who is uh, a reverend, a pastor, or anything like that that would like to say prayer? Anybody in heaven? Oh, give it to us and give it to us. You didn't know that? No, ma'am. I so oh. much don't know about you, but you are a gem. So please, bless us. God bless us all, and by all, I mean all the nations, the rainbow nations, the white, the black, the brown, the yellow, the red. The last two you know, seem to be left out there in the ethers at times, so please, God, find a way to bring us all together, because what we're fighting is a poison called our lives, and if we can't breathe, we can't be. So God bless us all, and peace and love. Amen. 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 And I just want to add something really quick. So we just also want to thank you for the food that we're about to receive. May it nourish our minds, may it nourish our bodies, may it nourish our hearts. May it allow us to uh, open up in a soulful way as we share and break bread together. So we thank you so much for Susan Sunshine and so many other elders that are here and all of the work that we're here to do. We give you all the praise and glory. Amen. 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 All right. So, help yourself if you're ready. Go right ahead. We have some of what we have. We have pita bread and hummus. And we have falafels and shawarmas. So you have chicken shawarmas over there. And you got lamb and chicken shawarmas over there. And you got falafels over there. So, I, I booked for 20 people. You don't see 20 people, do you? So, help yourself. Okay, all right, help yourself. I'm pretty sure it's some late arrival. Yeah, I'm sure they some will. Some people will come real fast and be late. Oh, and we definitely oh. can find a way to <laughs> And that's fine with me. Use the food. Use the food. Uh -huh. okay. and, and you know what? I do want to uh, disclose that this meeting, um, this was a long thought about process that we really needed to have a strategy session. And this is not the only one that we're going to do. We're going to do more in the coming weeks, but this is the first of many series uh, because it is this discussion that really needs to be had. You may have been to other discussions around water, but this is a strategy-based solutional focus on tackling the water issue. Yes. I understand, the, let me just disclose that I understand the water issue may be complex uh, for people going, water protectors, water um, fighters that are going through this struggle, but if we all come together, share our ideas, share our experiences, and form upon a main solution so that we can, you know, organize together. There are other groups, organizations, that are fighting the water struggle um, in Detroit, Flint, and other places, but we want to bring this nexus together yeah. in unity, one body, one focus. Yes, yes. Right. That's what this conversation is about. That's right, and that's the agenda. Okay. And we also want to point out, to preface the meeting with saying that we know we all have our own stories, we all have our own griefs. You know, I have mine, you have yours, for your own particular reasons. And so we want to, um, you know, we've kind of been through, been there, done that, so we definitely want to create something new. Um, it's 2017, we have a new presidency. There's a lot of new things going on. So we really can't afford to have the same old conversations, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We gotta have new conversations because things are changing around us whether we want it to or not. So that's what this is about. Um, we're not gonna bring a whole lot of um, you know, stories or, or, you know, I've been to the meetings, so I'm speaking from experience, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm, yes. I'm talking as a mm -hmm. vet, okay? I'm not speaking as somebody on the outside looking in. I've been to the meetings, <laughs> and I know what I'm talking about. So, we're not going to do that type of session today. We're going to do the type of session again where we, like my, Miko said, strategize, use our creativity, use our brain power for something that actually is going to come up with some solutions. Because even in 2014, my main premise, my background is education, so my main premise was educate the people and you will see a change. Mm -hmm. Educate the people and you will Got see it. a change. You understand? So because the, the power is in the people. So that's what this is about. And we thank you so much for, again, joining us, giving us your attention, and that's what the, that's what we're about to do. Like, get it in. Yeah. One brief question. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is based on water, but one thing I would like to bring up, even if it's the last minute, if we have, is uh, air quality because of the children and everyone else that are dying of asthma because they don't have their emergency medicine. From Angela Davis to two of my, not just personal, but two of my friends 
kids, the aunts, mm -hmm. uh, not the mothers, so I didn't know them, and a friend uh, a couple weeks ago that's done sound in the cast corridor forever. Okay. So, I mean, we've got to find a way, because of this, that these kids have their medicine as much as they Absolutely. have their water. And I'm more into health than that, but the emergency medicines must be given for them Absolutely. poisoning and, us. And, and water is connected to everything. Exactly. Environmental issues, mm -hmm. whatever that's happening on the east side, mm -hmm. you know, we, there, there's no quality clean water over there, especially when you have stuff breathing out in the air from the incinerator. So, of course, we're going to cover that as well. Yeah. Um, and we thank you for being a voice for them, too, because I didn't know anything about it until you just said it. So, thank you for being a voice. And, and last hopefully we least. can get together yeah, on, sure. a, on another note and then do something together. <laughs> okay? All right. We did this all the time. We just saw us in Ireland. It was so funny. Oh, yeah. We had been Ireland. We'd be been like Ireland. Been going Ireland. back and forth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, please bear with us. And, and last but not least, this presentation is dedicated in honor of memory to Charity Hicks, oh. Angela Harris, yes. and Mark Anderson, Mark Anderson. Yes. Yes. Jerome Jackson, yes. and Rakeba Brown, and wow. other uh, wow. in the water struggle that we lost mm -hmm. in, in our activist community. Yes. Bruce Sullivan Foster yes. was the yeah. first guy that gave me he advice when we went into dealing Feaster. with the mayor. <laughs> Feaster. Yeah, I'm sorry. Feaster. Feaster. Sorry. He was the first man that gave me advice when we went to confront uh, uh, Duggan and the officials. And he told me, Miko, do not let them people try to entice you because they will try to throw, take you out to lunch. They'll pay the bill and they'll try to compromise. Don't let them people compromise with you. And I took that to heart. And this is why we're prominent in the water struggle right now. Still here. Yeah. Still Miko, here. Miko, full disclosure. Yeah, you know, I'm here as the political director of Michigan and all over the state. I also represent WVON in Chicago in a very small show where for the last three years I've done radio reports from Flint mm -hmm. on the Flint water issue as well as Detroit on water shutoffs and whatnot. Yeah. So that's part of the reason I'm here also nice. because I think this group needs to be uh, just get a little bit more uh, media focus on what you've been doing over the Absolutely. years. Yes. And you yes. may recall yes. but three years ago I wrote the first article linking uh, from mm -hmm. the Michigan citizen when GM refused to use the Flint water in the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Uh, Kirk Guyatt was working with us then. He wasn't the first one, but I'm not know who did what first, uh, but right. the record's clear. Right. And uh, you know, just do what you do. And and, and most sure. definitely Thank you for being here. Uh, most definitely like I'm Detroit sure. and Flint are in the same Situation. I got, it. I got it. But but we're but we're we're you can see here that Flint doesn't believe that Detroit is is that the they're, they're become like I was just off a call with Flint activists yes. a week ago, uh Mule and I. Yes. Lord. And we were told that Flint is not the same situation as Detroit. And we're telling them from our experience, same. Detroit is the poster child yeah. for privatization. Yeah, but the misery should not compete with misery. And what you do is you keep doing exactly. what you're doing, and there will be a blending. Exactly. I mean, I'm here. My mother and father buried in Flint. Oh, yes. My sister, a breast cancer survivor, yes. lives there. Right. When, wow. when I went to the first Earth Summit on the Environment in 1992, that's 25 years ago. <laughs> that was the first Earth Summit on the Environment in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. I was there with Al Gore, my client was Jerry Brown, the governor of California. So, I mean, we have a history that joins us together from Flint and Detroit. I love it. I love it. We definitely need your expertise. Mm -hmm. Thank we you. We sure do, Mr. Sam. Um, so, are so you ready? Yeah. Okay. So, before we uh, get off into the strategizing part of it, um, I'm going to do my piece. Right? Okay. All right. So, my piece, um, what I come to bring is pretty much more of a... Um, holistic or more of a natural based background to water. And this is a presentation that I actually had the honor of presenting um, as the keynote speaker at Central University in Ohio. And I was very, you know, Central honored, State. Central right. State. Mm -hmm. And I was very honored to be there because, you know, I was glad that people of, of, that, uh, of that thought process or, or that lifestyle was that concerned about water. But the struggle that we were having in the water struggle when I was in it is how do you bridge the gap? How do you bridge the gap between those that say, oh, you should just pay for your water. You should just pay for your water and pay your bill, honey, and, and shut up is what you should do. And whatever that bill say and whatever they charge is what you should go ahead and pay. If you don't have the money, that's on you. Oh, we've heard it all, okay? So that's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum says water is a natural right 
It is necessary for living your life on the planet, right? So the struggle was, how do you bridge the two? And that's what I struggled with. And, and I noticed, especially once I did the feature on The Daily Show with uh, uh, John Stewart, that really opened my eyes because it opened me up to a whole new world of people. That was mainstream. So now the mainstream people aren't the activists. They're not the socialists. They're not the people that's really in this and caring about it and seeing it every day. They don't see it every day. <laughs> They driving in they in they bins and, and they you know they don't see it they don't know so now that put us in mainstream okay how do you bridge the gap so a few months later is when I was able to go to Central State and really feature it but I had an opportunity to put my speech together and what I chose to talk about was why do we all need water right. Why should you care if you pay your water bill and you don't even see the bill? <laughs> okay, your accountant pays it. <laughs> All right, why should you care about me, single mom, five kids, need help paying $150 or $200 or $2,000 or whatever water bill? Why would you care? Well, this is why. Let me, let me ask you a question here. Um, by show of hands, what is it in society, in our lives today, for survival that does not require water. Just name me one thing on the planet that is necessary for our survival that does not require the use on some level of water. Go! <laughs> Fuzzy, you, you, you don't have it? Uh, I'm like spinning and I'm thinking <laughs> glass blowing, but you know what? You need water for glass blowing. Uh, I'm thinking making clothing, but you need water. You need to be able to clean the cloth and actually set it to, to its wearable state. There's nothing that doesn't require water. There is nothing on the planet that doesn't require water. So once we make that connection, <laughs> does it make it a little bit simpler for you about why this water thing is important to all of you? Everybody, I don't care how much money, you need water to make the money. Those who have the money, you need water to make it. It's paper. I'm just saying, I mean, maybe I'm too practical. Maybe I'm too down to earth. I don't know, I'm from the D, you know what I'm saying? We happen to be a little down to earth, you know? That's the human element. Wow. But that's the real part of it. Like, get real. Get human, get real. Hello, tap in. So that being said, with all of the distractions that we have around us, these distractions would not be if you don't have water. <laughs> so if water is the primal force, and we see it through our history, through our ancestry, regardless of where you come from on the planet, you know and I know that water has been, and, and, and still is, in a lot of places around the world, very sacred, very, very, very spiritual and connected to life. Your body is majority water, the planet is majority water. Babies come through water, your brain sits in water. This water thing is not no joke. And it's multifaceted. Political, financial, economic, and social, and spiritual, and religious, and... You got some groups, religious groups, we're not gonna point any fingers, who don't necessarily get involved in this water thing, right? Now, that's it's very choice. fun. Hey, hey, that, that's, that, that's a community. That's, that's a political. That, that, that's not that's a, 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 a religious problem. Okay? And mind you, hey, like I said, you can believe and choose what you choose. I'm not here to judge. That's not my, that's not my calling. My calling is just to give you the information and do what you choose. And so with that information, what we found out is that how can you run a service without water? Like, don't you have to do certain services and perform certain rituals with water? Mm -hmm. It seems pretty practical across the board. Okay? So that being said, what do we do? Now, to back my information up with my presentation at Central State, because mind you, now I'm in the room with a lot of scholars, a lot of people who really just don't have a reason to think on this level all the time because they have so many other things going on. That university was popping when I was on campus, okay? So I know these people are busy. They're moving, they're doing other things. They don't have time to think about this and make it practical. So I got an hour to make this happen, right? How am I gonna do this? Well, I'm going to pull out information that speaks their language, right? 
because I'm just mm. a little poor black girl from Detroit. I don't know nothing, right? Mm. I don't know nothing. So why don't I find someone that speaks your language, okay? So I studied this thing for a long time. Long before I even got into the water situation, I studied water. It's just, it's, it's, I'm African. It's just some personal stuff I need, okay? So water is important to me on a whole other level, all right? In doing my studies, my friend gave me a book. And this book, Miko, I think I got it. This book was from Dr. Emoto. It's a Japanese doctor from Japan, duh. And, um, and he did this extensive scientific study about water. Very extensive. Because there's always this, yep, yes. there's always this, this force or this, this uh, idea that water is this or water is that. He said, well, I want to know what water really is. Some people say water is alive. Some people say water is a spirit. Some people, you know what I'm saying? There's all these... Uh, 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 myths about water. So he said, I want to get to the real about what water is, right? So he did all these extensive studies about water, and he was able to come up with a device that broke water down to its very core. He crystallized water to its very core. Mm -hmm. And what he discovered is that water itself, whether you call it alive, whether you call it science, whatever you want to call it, the information is out there. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> okay? Water responds to the force and the life around it, to the life force around it. That's what he found. So if you, say, play rap music, real talk, play rap music or hard rock around water, took a jar of water and did that, the water crystallized all crumply and crazy looking. Mm -hmm. Take another glass, put some symphony music next to it. Crystallized so beautifully, so wonderfully. Just the beautifulest crystal. So you're now, saying the rap music is bad and the sympathy music is good? No, no. not at all. <laughs> That's just different results. No. Those are just different results. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. And I'm, I want to go ahead and clear that up for you. Because okay. that's not what I, okay, that's that's not what I intend. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. No worries. <laughs> okay. What I intend, the intention of saying that, because this is what happened. So, you know, just... I, I don't know me. who that guy is. I don't know what exactly. Guy is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now I'm trouble. Exactly. So, okay. so, 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 so in answering what you really want to ask is this. It's about frequency. It's about vibration. Okay? We talking about physics here. All right? We talking about some universal stuff. Hey, again, we talking language. I understand. Okay? Okay, I so think I'm at me, the wrong meeting. I thought it was something else. I, when you get through with the consciousness part about water, I'll return. Oh, that's perfectly okay. fine. Yes, please do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, have a good one. Have a great one. You okay. too. Thank you so much. So, in the consciousness of water, water having this effect, and water being the majority of your body, so you should know how it affects your body, right? So the frequency, the vibration, how you talking to it, the, the, the pounding, the soothing, all of that stuff is important, okay? And it's just like a light and a shadow. You got to have both, right? They come together. So knowing the consciousness of water, knowing how water moves on the planet, knowing what water means, it's important. And it might explain some things that you may or may not understand now about this water struggle. I don't know, okay? But this is the information that's out there, and this is the layer that we have to go to, whether we want to or not. And yes, it's going to make some people uncomfortable, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right? We're not here to debate <laughs> and, and fight, you know, logistics and all of that, because again, the information is out here. So I'm going to play a video for you. You probably won't be able to see the, um, I mean, hear the audio, but you'll see the images. And I think a lot of it is written out, too. So are you ready? Sometimes. We're ready. Yep. Here we go, Mama. So this is 20 some minutes or three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. And it's pretty self explanatory. Dr. Emo. Dr. Emo. Go. <laughs> So this is what happens when the word love is spoke to the water. Mm -hmm. When you say thank you to a glass of water, this is what happens. When you say love, I love and appreciate you or show love and appreciation, that's what happens to the crystal. The crystals in the water. And the crystals in the water. Okay. Each crystal that makes up the water itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Thank you. Truth. Speak truth into a glass of water, and this is the crystal that comes up. Okay? 
I'm just got baptized by me. The, and the overall of why water is important. Now here comes the political in the business side. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I'm going to try to keep it short as much as I can, but I want to hit you up by the numbers, okay? Can anybody tell me how much, how many homes were shut off in 2014, please? 23,000? Right. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, there was a mass aggressive water shutoff campaign yeah. that is shutting off homes to the city of Detroit in a massive large number. Can you tell me? They did 3,500 houses a week. Oh, a week. A week. It started March 2014. And it was on the dashboard. 3,500 families houses a week. They aggressively did that to all of us. How, how many total? I'm talking about 150,000? Was it 500,000? Uh, 80,000? One is enough. I thought it was scheduled for like 100,000. Okay. It was scheduled for everybody. But I don't know if they ever... We'll just say 100,000 at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay? Can anybody tell me how much water did they shut off in 2015? I don't know. In 2015, they came back with a reorganized effort to shut off water. Now, let me tell you, in 2014, we have gotten... Four moratoriums, uh, two water affordability fairs, one that I organized at Cobo Hall where 5,000 Detroiters showed up and showed up to handle that business. Mm -hmm. I also was involved with trying to create a short. water relief amnesty program, which will get 50 to 70 percent off of your water bills. And in 2014, all of these things that we've done throughout the bankruptcy, we were told that there is no human right to water. There's no affordable right to water. We must, the DWSD was justified, okay? So we go through the winter, 2015, they talked about shutting off more water. How many numbers? Okay, so there's 100,000 people. Yes, 34,000 in 2014. Mm -hmm. 24,000 in 2015. Okay. 27,500 in 2016. Or you can go to bridgemi.com. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Because that's, hey, that's where the source of the this intro is. Where the story, this is where my presentation is coming from based off of the story that Joel has written in the Bridge Magazine this Thank week. Thank you, Joel. And <laughs> the next thing is 2017. Now, the numbers, if you can understand the numbers that they claim have went down, but shutoffs still occurring. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're sh not investigating people. They're shutting off homes to the city of Detroit. They have no idea, and it's now done as a head count because before they were demolishing houses mm -hmm. with people in them, and they were not taking account of how many people we had here in the city of Detroit. You can't rely on census numbers, mm -hmm. census no. bureau for anything because no. you have to do this through an organized effort, and this is all a part of Detroit Future City. Mm -hmm. To shut off water mm -hmm. and to bridge neighborhoods, mm -hmm. people in the neighborhood closer together in different normalized areas. Mm -hmm. All right? So, the residential debt of Detroit water is $15 million. Mm -hmm. 15 to $20 million. Corporational debt uh -huh. is over $9.5 million mm -hmm. and rising. DWSD keeps estimating the value of $85 million now down to 45 million, but 45 million dollars, that's not true because residential debt is 15 million to 20 million. Now, I have organized with uh, debt collection agencies. Mm -hmm. I have talked to many bankruptcy experts and they have told me that there are ways to prevent your water from being shut off and to get in a payment plan where you will be free of debt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure is. What does the water department do? Yep. They want to design a payment plan to keep you on to debt, chained for two years yeah. at a certain price that you know that yeah. you're set up to fail. Right. All right? Yep. Now, the reason I brought these numbers out is because you have to understand. Now, who is affected by the water shutoffs? Hmm. The Children, seniors, mm -hmm. disabled. Yeah. Let's go all in. Let's go in the full focus. Everyone. 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 Businesses. Everyone. If and the small business. Because you don't have water at home to wash yes. your butt or okay, whatever, you don't get a job. I mean, you know, yeah, restaurant, small, small restaurant. restaurant. How are you going to serve anything when your water's <laughs> off? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, in the case of Detroit Water, because this conversation is, is going to conclude Detroit Water, Flint, um, 
Detroit Water, where people get the misconception is, is that this public relations campaign that DWSD set out so greatly that people aren't paying their bills because water, they, we believe water is free. We live off the Detroit River. Mm. We live on the freshest, great place in the world. That's not true. This is all from corruption, mismanagement, from years past. And now we're paying for the sins of bonds. Yeah. This is what we talked about in Ireland. Why we're in emphasizing Ireland is because they are being double charged. Mm -hmm. They're taking, they always pay taxes. Mm -hmm. You pay your taxes, right? Everybody mm -hmm. pays taxes. Okay. So we pay our taxes. <laughs> so we could pay a tax for water and water would be insured to our homes at no cost, right? Mm -hmm. They taking it out of the, taking the taxes out of the water, taking the water out of the taxes and making it a separate tax. They didn't want to add a double charge onto it to deliver the water to your home. Mm -hmm. When we were in Ireland, they were shutting, they were stopping the water meters from being put in. Here, we stopped the water shutoff trucks from going out. Mm -hmm. We stopped DW uh, Hombridge from going out to shut off. Five hundred people were saved that day. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to. This is what I didn't understand about the Ireland thing until I got over there, which is so different from America. But it's really an important piece of showing you how it's global, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you know how in Detroit, we used to pay for our water through our taxes. We used to get a bill for like 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks every three months. Now you get a bill of 180, whatever, every month, right? And, and I don't know if we're still paying it in our taxes or not. But in Ireland, they've never had a meter system, ever. Water is just part of the deal, right? Now, all of a sudden, after all these years, the, the government is introducing a meter system. So we went over there to let people know, don't fall for the meter. The meter is a trap. <laughs> you fall for the meter, you're in trouble because now they're going to clock everything you do and they're going to tax you double. And so that's what was happening over there. So they fought it and um, they actually got them in, but then they made them take them out. You know, so the people over there are really unified in fighting this thing. Like the government really is, they don't know what to do. But that's the major difference that we have to take note of, that they're putting the meter system that we use in America, they're trying to in, enforce it or, or make it yeah. on, other, on other countries. Why is that? Wow, mm. that's a good question because, see, Commoditizing. Detroit, yeah. it's not just so much as Detroit. Water is a business. It is becoming a billion-dollar industry sure. with Nestle becoming the biggest proprietors of bottled water. And they're scoping out municipalities, cities, townships, wherever they can get, so that they can get to their municipal water supply to sell mm -hmm. back the water to us at a price that we, you know, it's cheaper in the gas station when you buy it for 99 cents, but have you ever wondered where that water come from, who produces that water, and how that water is made, you know, under the basis of man-made crisis. Mm -hmm. Detroit water is the yeah. first one. Flint, the second one. Now, thus, now, at peace just got through talking to y'all about water as a human since here we are as humans, we're compassionate. We want to give water to people that have been affected that, are, that don't have water. So we go into the store buying cases of water, not recognizing hmm. who, what, when, where, and how. And, and, and we just, and they're all making profits off of the water that we have. So let me continue here. What are the solutions that we came up with to combat this problem of water shutoffs? I'm pretty sure that myself, at peace, and a couple other prominent water organizations here in the city of Detroit have went to the mayor, have went to the city, have went to the water department officials, and said, yes, we have solutions here. Let us present these to you in forms of a water affordability plan, which pays your bill by income. Mm -hmm. Water amnesty that will take fifty to seventy percent off your water bills to make it a final price under a thousand dollars, and you have the lifeline of a payment plan or any other opportunity. We even said, uh, give us a, a more moratoriums that water should not be shut off on residents until you have an accurate stock of who, uh, what is going on. The water department said no. We're going to continue the same down road, damn road. We that's right, damn bro. That's right. And and they have and they have shunned us. So they have shunned all of us from from even discussing. Now I know someone running for re-election, right? Now I have proposed the solutions. I want to throw in this meeting. I, I just want to throw this out here in the public sense because this is things that I've been thinking about for so long. We must have 
um, a water crusade to where organizations and, uh, act and activists and other mm -hmm. community groups mm -hmm. are um, coming this to way. Oh, that way. Way. Come see you. Over here. There you go. Okay. Okay. In the, in the I want to show y'all on my presentation. This is the presentation that I did in North Carolina, and I'm so proud to do this presentation in the city of Detroit, my home, because it's a conversation we all need to have here. Now, um, I want to throw this out there in solutions that I thought about. Water Crusade. We are working with groups and organizations to get in different neighborhoods to bring everyone out to come against the, to get, come against the water shutoffs. Mm -hmm. My second thing, can't pay, won't pay. I'm not paying another <laughs> damn bill until they, until DWSD get itself together. That's right. but, in the city, but in a city like Detroit, mm. we can't do that because people need water. water. Yeah. Right. Mm. I feel safe in this room. Let me tell you something. Black folks in the city trade are not going to go for a girl with can't pay, won't pay. They will not. They will look at me. I will be roasted on Fox 2, let it rip if I went there and I said, I'm not paying enough damn water. Right. Well, you just won't have no water. Right. 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 Okay. Well, I don't need your damn water. If I got to, look, if I got to pay water bills and I still got to drink out of bottled water, right? I, why am I paying for this anyway? Flint is dealing with that same situation. So can't pay, won't pay. I love it. And then... I said, um, I want to organize a, uh, a, a event to catch the mayor where he at, you know, confront him and make him beg. When I'm for our, for make him beg. But I, again, that's just an idea that I had that I want to throw out there because it's, you know, People yeah. tell me, no, these things can't be done, Miko. We we can't just stop paying for water. We can't uh, protest the middle. We can't. I said, the hell we can. Right. This is why. I, right. This is this where is the strategy idea. session mm -hmm. come from. Because we are sitting here and and we have ideas and solutions. But like I said to you before, no idea is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm willing to hear anything. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to reopen the floor because I'm afraid that we're having too many meetings and too many, com we're getting uh, uh, convulsed <laughs> in statistics when we're not out in the streets mm -hmm. organizing our neighbors right. and having weekly meetings and yes, Bill Davis has them every week at NAM. You know, people yeah. come out there, they get the information and that's one of the prominent organizations mm -hmm. and most definitely people of national prominence have supported us here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And they think that we're not standing up. Yeah. Well, they sure do. the media is against you, two, four, and seven. <laughs> they right. will be, I told them don't even bring your asses here. They are because not so I don't want this meeting. That's this right. meeting is for residents. That's right. It's not for two, four, and seven mm -hmm. to go back and you know report to Mayor Dukey or whatever. Excuse mm -hmm. me. That's why I call the mayor. Uh, I, I tell y'all that in progress. Elma Fudd. Elma Fudd. <laughs> <laughs> so, and let me just show you from my presentation here. I mean, I, I made this, and I'm going to just run through it real quick. I'm about where you were at when you did this piece. When I was in North Carolina, uh, this is one of the first presentations I did in North Carolina for clean water um, action. And they were fighting coal and uh, uh, contaminants in their water. And they wanted to know what was happening in Detroit because it became a big deal. So, as you can see here, the City of Detroit Water and Sewage Department unlocked the public campaign. Former emergency manager Kevin Orr sent out bids for privatization two days before he announced that there is a massive water shutoff oh, wow. campaign. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that little piece of information. Okay. I didn't know that little piece. You knew it, you forgot. And, and, and privatization of southeastern Michigan's largest water system. We are combined with 122 other communities in southeastern Michigan. They are mad at us because they feel that we are... Uh, uh, charging the water and we are siphoning, uh, they, they feel like we're corruptionists, but it's the state of Michigan, sorry. Okay, the decline of Detroit public schools, uh, it tells everything to where this water main break happened for days and no one said anything about it, mm -hmm. for days. Ronnie Dahl, uh, a former reporter that worked with us, uh, did this report. They approve a line of credit to fix up the schools. State takes over the public schools. State closes two-thirds of the schools. Scrap metals and thieves destroyed the schools. Schools can't be reopened or sold. So we just got into a deal. Potential revenue loss, blighted revenues, I mean, uh, neighborhoods. So basically, Detroit public schools owe a big water bill, and they're not paying. Okay? 
other cities and counties, and this is not just Detroit. It's Baltimore, Seven. Maryland, which is a water shutoff privatization. Yep. Going Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is going through water shutoffs and potential fi fiscal stability. <laughs> Financial Act is Public Act 4. New Jersey, water privatization. Chicago is being threatened with water shutoffs and privatization. Memphis, Tennessee, threats of water shutoffs and privatization. Water, water privatizing ATL by, the, uh, by a regional authority there. California restricted use and water drought. So while residents are getting shut, uh, uh, telling not to use the water, celebrities and movie stars can have big ass pools not even used mm -hmm. to have water. Sao Paulo, Brazil has a water drought, and Ireland has water privatization and double charges. And we met, we met a representative, which is probably the worst place right now. Earlier this year, county officials sent out 72,000 foreclosure notices to homeowners behind on property taxes. 62,000 of them are in Detroit alone. 18,000 of these properties are occupied, but with fewer than half of those homeowners have paid all their tax, Wayne County plans to sell 28,000 Detroit properties at auction this fall, including 10,000 occupied homes. Okay, and these are uh, homes that are delinquent in three years or more on water. Water still runs in these abandoned structures. The members of the Detroit Water and Sewage Department, you see them here coming out of the back room of a major deal. Uh, I think we were there, Bill Davis, when uh, uh, George Cushenberry held that meeting on um, the uh, drought charges. Um, we're calling an invest official investigation into the Detroit Water Department for the mismanagement, mishandling, and further look into the control operations and insight of our water system. Okay? The fire hydrants don't work here in Detroit, and that's a safety issue because you are fired, because if you have a fire in your home, uh, uh, you are you are toast. And they dig in a and that's 75% of them though? Uh, 75% of Detroit fire hydrants. At now, there um, the, there's no update. Steve Neagling is working with me on that and issue. They're wow. them up till we go. And they're digging them up and not even replacing them. Mm. So people oh, won't go crazy. to the fire hydrants at night. Sounds like and, and you asked where the Detroit... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds like the oh, lighting. Yes. They pulled the, the lighting because he can't pay for it. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to pull up because, your water. Because these, water, these, these fire hydrants haven't been working for a long, long time and they lose water pressure. Uh -huh. And they tried to blame. They, I, I so they become detrimental. The kids for running the fire hydrants during the summer. That's not even so. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now, you asked about the Detroit Water Department workers. And I stand in solidarity with the workers. Well, that's, Bill yeah. Davis is a right. former worker of the Detroit yep. Water Department. Um, if you know anything He's about the... So... Another <laughs> So, there was a EMA proposal over our Water Department uh, that has projected a 10-year saving of cutting cost and outsourcing workers and employees of the Detroit Water and Sewage Department. And now Veolia Water is running our department. That was so, while well, we were under federal study, oversight. We were under federal oversight. We were federal oversight. We were under the consent decree over our water back in the 70s. Um, the water department had a uh, 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 $5.9 billion, uh, and it was $2.6 billion for water and $3.3 billion for sewer. That was the last uh, what I got from 2014 got from the EMA proposal. <laughs> Corporations have not been paying their water bills. Oh, the, so the commercial water shutoffs, I don't know what it is with golf courses, y'all, but I don't <laughs> swing a golf course. But Someone's favorite people. And the now the city course. council just gave them an extension to run the golf courses of Detroit. So Who is doing that? Uh, the city council just gave an extension to the golf course. Uh, Palmer, I, I put up a story Palmer about West it the, the other day. Okay. Um, Are you kidding the Rajel Golf Course, the Palmer Park Golf Course, all of them, they have not been paying their bills, but that's city-owned property. So the city won't even admit to oh, pay their own oh. damn bills. They won't pay their own bills because Palmer, Palmer they're, Park they're Golf internal Course bills. owes $425,000. And when I debated with Daryl Latimer, former Waterhead Department Director over that, he told me that golf courses and, and anything owned by the city is on a deferred payment plan. I said, Daryl Latimer, you a liar in the name of everything I know. Joe Louis Arena getting tore down. Oh, $80,000. Chris Illich ain't even paid that 
money off. No, we building a new stadium. Yeah, Eastern Market. You all go there. You all go to Eastern Market. Sixty thousand dollars. They ain't pay their water bills. Ford Field. Fifty five thousand dollars. I made the. Det I said the Detroit Lions need to pay their water the bill. Okay. Because but but in the state of Michigan. The state of Michigan building on Woodward. We're talking about Flint. Um, and you see here Melissa Mays, she's a prominent activist oh. out there in Flint, and she was the one that first came and said that the water was poisoned yeah, in 2014. Is. No she's one still believed her. In a, in her family because they have nowhere to go to bathe. As of right now, the water is being yeah, shut off. Looks. As of right now, the water is being shut off in Flint, and they are now uh, foreclosing homes on water. Right, right. they're tying the water to the houses now. We have been in consultation with uh, Flint to help them out. Uh, we just got to get them some more political congruency because it's not the mayor. It is the state poking the mayor to do this. Okay, just like, this? Go ahead. Say it. Not only that, take it even a step further because, like I said earlier, the administration has changed all across the board. Mm -hmm. So the state is being poked. We're poking the state, but guess who's poking the state too? The bondholders. Your boy, Tag, your, your, your boy, your boy. Bank. Yeah. The bondholders. The, whole the bondholders. Yes. The, the whole presidential Moody. thing. It was a joke. The whole presidential we thing has shifted. <laughs> if you've been looking at the news, mm -hmm. Trump's proposed budget. Cut out a lot of state funding to clean the water. Oh yeah, mm, we know. They claim, oh, we gave them a, a lump sum of money to clean up the water, and it'll be cleaned up by twenty. Whatever. Yeah, like a hundred million dollars. Like that. But at yeah. the end of the day, That's really enough. think about that. Okay. Like really, really think about mm -hmm. it. You know, and if they don't just, have the money to clean up the water, and let me just then what are we you. gonna do about it? And that, and that, uh, I, I would stand on that standpoint. Trump is in office. Forty-five. Trump. Snyder, Duggan, Talk what are these people, the, they all have the same Bitch. qualities. They're businessmen, they have no connection to people, you're a consumer, the customer, and they know what's right for you. They And they're all about privatization and control, so yeah. we are definitely fighting a big uh, uh, devil. A big. So we're talking about the, a resource being turned into a commodity yeah. yes. that's got a market value. Water is not yeah. a commodity. It is not a commodity. It is a human right, an essential human right. Now, but what you said is correct, Steve. Um, really let me keep going along because I want to get to, I want to get into the strategy sessions here. Highland Park owed twenty four million dollars. They were fighting in the court, and as of December, um, we have lost the water shut off trial. It was a class action lawsuit with twenty four plaintiffs and uh, organizations who were calling for moratoriums and the water affordability plan to be implemented, they have lost that trial. Highland Park lost the trial. Now we owe $24 million to Detroit Water and Sewage Department, which could bankrupt Highland Park and put them back in receivership. Oh, wow. There's more than that with Highland Park. Highland Park. more than that. How much is Mr. Uh, well, I'm just saying Highland Park has other problems in there. One of the main problems in Highland Park is low water pressure. Oh, they got low water pressure? Oh, yes. yes. They have regular chronic low water pressure. Oh, my goodness. And it's a, it's a major problem if you have for diseases and fires. Yeah, I was just about to ask mm. that. Doesn't the water has to flow. I didn't know that, Mr. Uh huh. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and, 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 and Highland Park is already problem. unstable. Yeah. Like, you know, they could snatch up Hubert Yop, the mayor, and they could put in an emergency manager just right. off like the they end. They essentially closed down the Highland Park water department yeah. so they could get it offline. Uh huh. They and they privatized it to a um, company now because they got two offices. No. The facility getting. Okay. Your battery's coming to an end. Okay. Um, in February and March, we the bankruptcy was really a, a, a game changer in the city of Detroit. I mean, this was a call to action to save our city from corporate vultures raining in on our assets. So at these, so when I got these numbers, this was from 2014. The residential accounts in delinquent status is 79,000. Payment plan enrollees, 17,000. Those in bankruptcy, 2,000. Those unprotected, 59,000. The shutoffs occurred, and this is from a report from the Water and Sewage Department that I got these numbers from. Oh, really? Um, assistance means help as long as there are charitable funds available. Affordability means the bills are charged based on the customer's income. We don't want assistance. Mm -mm. I can agree with a lot of people mm -hmm. in the city of Detroit that we would say, we don't want any no. payment plan assistance. No. We want affordability, mm -hmm. zero out the debt. Mm -hmm. 
And we had a petition to cancel the debt, and Mayor Duggan told us in the city council, me and me and Bueller was, oh, well, this yep. is nice petition, but it should have came with checks attached. Yep, should have came with money. Mm. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Yes, Fuck that guy. I, every presentation or everything I do in my presentation, I always ask this question. Why does the media makes us believe 300,000 Detroiters don't want to pay water bills instead of a few bondholders being too greedy? Yep. This is the water shutoff uh, by zip code in the form of payment plans. Uh, Joel just left from here. He did that um, last year. And that was our only uh, information to where I can organize as to where these shutoffs are happening and how I can organize those communities. Part of this has got to do with the occupancy. With 800 them. or more are mm -hmm. in the outlying areas. This is Andre Spivey's district. Uh, this right here, um, District 7? District no, yes, one. 1. District that's 1. one. one baby. And below it is 7. And he has the highest water water shutoff numbers. I tried to. Okay. James yeah, Spivey. Spivey so, queen. wait a minute. In the political sense, you, James Tate, and Andre Spivey, you running for re-election. Well, that's Tate then, and that's uh, Benson straight across. I thought that was Benson. Uh, Spivey is down here. Spivey's down, the down in the bottom right. Right. Come on. Come Two, on, three, four. Come on. So, yeah, just, just to, mm -hmm. but what you've got also is the communities that are under hardest hit funds because they have the highest uh, residency uh, density. They received hardest hit funding due to the population density that their locations because have. It's just, because it's just... Not the places like oh, Spivey's area. They're they're actually trying to depopulate Spivey's area to turn it into an industrial park all along the riverfront. That's the Aerotropolis plan. If you really want to know about the Aerotropolis, please look up uh, Miller Canfield's uh, and their plans because they're main person okay. around the aerial okay. I got five minutes there. left. I got I got to press through. Okay, go okay, okay, so question. now you know. Yes, the uh, highest rates of shut shut off um, in districts. Uh, was it one District and seven? One, one and three. And one and four. one and three. One and three. three. Okay, one and three. And they got the most money. Well. Hardest hit funds, which has got to do with you oh, know that's actually one and four. saving mm -hmm. houses. Okay. Okay. Let me. Okay. Four. Here, I got five minutes here. I got to keep rolling. I got to keep rolling down the clock. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. And I'll, uh, okay, so these people here are the, are the culprits. You need to know your pay rates. Susan McCormick. Now, now part of, now part of the Great Lake. now ahead of the Great Lakes Authority. And she was the director for EMA mm -hmm. under federal oversight that made sure that we reduce the number of water positions, consolidate the number of water positions, okay. Get rid of the chemists from our department. Mm -hmm. The water chemists. Um, they are now contracted and no longer now, have a I, now bonded I put all license. All three of these: uh, Gary Brown, Great Lakes Water Authority, Veolia Water. He needs to be investigated because he has two conflicts of interest within the water department. At least two. These are the people that we've helped uh, so far. You know, we've done caravans. We had uh, my barbecue in the first slide. Uh, the water uh, that was from the Student Socialist Society from Ohio. Uh, me with a client, Beulah with a client, Miss Fayette hey. Coleman, uh, and uh, one of our clients that was happy she got, we gave her money because she didn't know where the money was coming from and she cried to us like we she help people. For, uh, what's called? If we yeah. didn't have a social charitable organization, we are the only water fund that performs better in a week than Thaw, Wayne Metro, which takes six to eight weeks and want to uh, investigate you like stock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does emergency managers all have in common? <laughs> oh, they all black faces for the white establishment, man. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, very good, very they good. They're all black, all of them. Very good. They're all black. Uh -huh. They all come from 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 uh, business or different decisions. So mm -hmm. let me tell you something. Businesses, businessmen are not um, politicians. Corporations are not people, and special interests are not the majority. Donald oh, Trump. Wow. We just got to talking about Donald <laughs> Trump. They, let me tell you, Donald Trump is the same dude who is about privatization. He will enrich special interests, enbridge uh, Dakota Access, and the Keystone is all to go. Mm -hmm. No respect. I stand with stand. What are these people? Now, what do these people have in common? They, they, they like to know? drink water. <laughs> I like drinking 
what? We should do memes like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they do. I got more. They are criminals. The Great Lakes Regional Authority, I need to clear this up for you really quickly because the Great Lakes Regional Authority is an illegal body. They are not voted on by the people. That's They're not given by our tax dollars. This is a special interest body, okay? We did not consent. We did not give our rights to approval for this Great Lakes Regional Board. And we're all financed by Oakland County's AAA bonds. And it was created okay, through a I'm special sorry. law, which uh, is an Robert illegal Daddow thing. Robert is a representative of L. Brooks Patterson. Yep. L. Brooks Patterson is the Grand Wizard of Oakland County. He, did, he wanted our water West. for years. And He's Coleman the Grand Young Wizard of the entire Rust Belt. He, well, first of all, Coleman Young has said, no, do not let them get our water. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? They, well, they got it through the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Now we're having higher water bills, unaccountabilities, privatization, concerns of our water quality. Okay? okay. Uh, this was just showing, you know, uh, the, the deal. Snyder got ore before uh, he appointed him to be emergency manager. Or uh, gives the water department to Michael Duggan. That's the first piece of, of democracy we've won as a city. Now, even though it was to be celebrated, that was just an accomplishment. And Michael Duggan here is promoting this in city council. The Great Lakes Authority is a um, is, is like a quasi-essential government body they're trying to be, but yet they take all of this from uh, they take all of this from the uh, the members. You're seeing the members here and the non-members. We have had boil water advisories mm. all year, yeah. probably longer than that. Mm. It happened in Detroit, Down River, Roseville, Troy. I was affected when I worked at Somerset Mall. Uh, they shut down the mall so people couldn't eat. Troy, Frazier, mm. they have that big sinkhole uh, that's now getting ready to be raised through water bills and taxes. Mm -hmm. Highland Park and Hamtramck. Mm. And what do they want to give you? Trump bottled water. You see that up under there? <laughs> Trump bottled water. <laughs> What do all these men have in common here? <laughs> and why are you all here? I bet they all hold bonds on water. I bet they this is the federal. That is your state, the city. That is the uh, special interest bondholders. And what do they like to do? They like to eat crab cakes and lobster. And drink water. And drink water in and here. Hey, Miss Monica. Monica. True water warrior in the house. So good. That's right. Water warriors up in here. I know. So, um, as I told you before, you know, we have tried everything here, but if we don't fight back for our water, these are the things that can happen. We could have, you know, uh, water that's brown and we can get arrested. We can have mm -hmm. higher water bills. The water department workers will still be on strike to water that's just brown and nasty. Major, major health issues. Major health issues. Major health issues yeah. for everyone. brought my water samples. Even people who got water. And the, this is the bankruptcy order. So they basically said, Steve Judge Rose. Stephen Rose said that there is no uh, affordable right to water. Yet he says in a video, in next, the next year, he says in the video that water is a human right. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, why didn't you legislate that? When why, didn't, why wasn't that a part of your order? It's just questions, you know, to Stephen Rose. Now he's bankrupting Detroit Public Schools. He's over Detroit Public Schools trying to... Inst Institute a bankruptcy plan there. No, now he's in Puerto Rico. Oh, oh we're really on vacation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, they move around, don't they? Right. Yeah, the transition. Away dirt um, mm -hmm. Veolia Water. Uh, you must know about Veolia Water. They're also an environmental management company. Mm -hmm. they're, the criminals, and they're criminals too. The criminals. They're set in line to run the operations of DWSD, outsourcing all the work. Kevin Orr put them people on. And uh, at this point right now, I, I think that they're, um, I don't know how much their contract is. Too damn much. Well, they're contracted in not just Detroit, but in Flint as well. Oh, and yes. They also have their hands in the M1 rail. Mm -hmm. uh, Rizzo I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. Viola mm -hmm. is in Rizzo. Viola Trail. is they're everywhere. Also Viola is privatizing transit. some of the transportation. They have control of the um, contracts. The transporting our children. Mm -hmm. Veolia, you have to know Veolia. Veolia is a yep. major target that we should all be going after. Right. Uh, they are involved in privatizing most of the shuttle, shuttle services at the airports. Oh. Yep. Uh, they mm -hmm. have their hands in what's happening with water in St. Louis and uh, New Orleans. More than 400 communities across the United States. Uh, Baltimore, 
uh, any yep. major urban center, they're looking to seize their water assets. And Veolia also is heavily involved in what's happening in Palestine and other parts of the globe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. You've got to connect the Devos, yeah. but you have to connect the Devos family. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, the, the, a lot of times people leave like that piece out. The yes. Devos family is a part of heading up Veolia, yeah. and that, so there's no separation in terms of what happened in our schools and what happened with water. Mm -hmm. You have to keep making those connections. Yeah, the emergency management mm -hmm. is that key mm -hmm. hammer but the DeVos family is a key funder. Mm -hmm. Is Veolia and Nestle the main two 